off more than he can chew here. The damage is going to come. I can't believe this guy. One before he picks up the kill, almost a double. And gets away. <laughs> Oh, the feather play caller. Oh my word, Fenty splashing it. He's got one. He's got two. Could this be the third? It's a triple kill for Fenty. It's a quadruple kill for Fenty as soon as he picks up the Blobblitz here. Unbelievable. This man's game is something else. Fenty picking up another one for himself. Going to go ace for nothing. I'm super low, but doing so much damage. You mentioned a thousand gold going over to your spear there. He's got another ulti. He's going to pick up two. That's a triple kill for him. That's a quadra kill for Venti. The Imperial Trigger is going to be unleashed, and it is slowly chipping down the health bars of Montana. Montana's on the great low. Venti is popping off here. He's got another one. He's gonna pick up! And then stolen by Mammo! Oh no! Oh, Dude, these guys are about to be perplexed when they low it in and get pollinated. Imagine one, one person doesn't it. have it. Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> you, they, just, they just now realized what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> this is so VM. This is so VM. When all of us get in game, can we all type bzzz? <laughs> yes, I, I wrote bzzz in all chat. Okay, how many Z's? How many Z's? Five Z's. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, everyone booze on end. That's okay. kind of toxic. No, 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 Red, is it? <laughs> Red, please. Imagine okay. they ban Yumi, Kogma, and Okay. I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! <laughs> I knew it. Uh, Tasty, you and I were talking in between the games, like, I can't imagine that they throw bans at the B-Comp. Like, that would just yeah. be ridiculous. <laughs> but here we are. Rosary for sure drinks soy milk. And back, flashing in with the W, maybe trying to find a kill to get the res off, but will not be the case. Damo and Venti chasing down Azakana here, but their damage is just so low this early on in the game. Venti going to have to flash away, going to be knocked back by the Hecarim E there, and that's going to be a clean 3 for 0 for T-Birds down in the bot lane. My bad. Oh, good. It just limit testing, limit testing. So if we I lose this, are we going back wow. to B? <laughs> we gotta go back to B comp. Just executing this 1 3 1 just as you wanted to see. Oh, 50 Rai guys. I'm gonna yeah, call up you, Justin. Nobody's there yet. Nobody's on top of you yet, Justin. Hecarim's there and Ezreal now. You have two. Okay, it's fine. I call him. Out of the death realm. But Justin is an absolute raid boss on this Mordekaiser right now. T-Birds has not played this carefully. They could both just fall to this Mordekaiser. Oh, a nice arcane ship going to get Zai. Phoenix P are going to be over oh, nine. Justin? <laughs> okay. He's actually he's unkillable. No, he's unkillable. Justin. Yeah, uh, he might dead Ari, but maybe. I don't know. Will he? I mean, this is... uh, he's uh, not dying. <laughs> he can smurfing, guys. I don't think he's killable. Oh, he's killing them all. Wait, Wait he actually isn't going to die. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. He's got four! Don't see this one He killed the ball, actually. He won the ball. Hello? He killed the ball. Hello? Okay, boys.
because I'm telling you, I know the counterpick to their team. It's f***ing Ash, Renata. It's a Teemo angle, boys. It's a Teemo angle. Man, you guys are looking cute today. Holly is not running flush. Hitting, hitting. Kinderhook gonna get down the ultimate. Not gonna matter. Hyde's gonna go for the heroics. Will not matter either. 14, 1, and 4 for Venti's Caitlyn. A triple kill to cap off this dominant Sac State win in game one. Oh my god, absolutely crazy. <laughs> you guys won't be getting Monty's breadstick. So, can, you, can you sleep on Mike? Yeah, so you can't sleep on Mike? The breadsticks at Pasquale's are actually so good. Okay, okay. so Timo Jungle oh is my god. It's really good for Timo Tristana. <sighs> the re it is I mean, <laughs> is there another- Timo can also jungle? like blind <laughs> them and <laughs> play Timo. <laughs> Bro, I'm <laughs> telling you, I want to play Timo. can't play Timo and like, while well, we'll know it's not VM, they might not know it's VM. I mean, fine, pick me, Zin Zhao. Wait, Udyr. <laughs> Good, Zin Zhao, Zin Zhao. <laughs> I'm, I'm down to play Udyr, though. I love the channel. Yeah. Did you run me from, of like, Doug from freaking up right there? It's like, oh wait, squirrel. <laughs> squirrel, 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 squirrel. Zach is around here. I have to be careful. Oh, they're, they're Regina. Let's sit here. Just sit here. Zach? One shot him, one shot him. Get Yumi too. Yumi's strong. Yumi's strong. Man, and we got mid. I got eight drops. I exhaust him. I exhaust him. Three seconds. Justin, run down mid with ult. Er, run down with ult. Nice. Go mid, go mid. We try to end. We have to end here. Yeah, we'll, we'll end. We'll end. Oh, we can probably end through top corner. Wait, where's Zach? Yeah, Nobody this? killed him. No, we didn't kill his blobs. Huh? <laughs> in five seconds, the fight's going to break out. Venti's in the back line. He's getting a let's bounce on. The Inferno Trigger going to be unleashed, and it is slowly chipping down the health bars of Montana. Montana jumps very low. Venti is popping off here. He's got another one. He's going to pick up. And then stolen by Bamo. Oh, no. Oh, my Bamo. God. Oh, my God. I cannot believe we won that game. Dude, there's no shot. I want to see the Dude, gold. That was grass. one of the most crazy games. Oh my God. Wait, look at the gold grass, guys. They were up 20 kills and they were like barely ahead. Wait, we're wait, wait, we're, we're up ahead gold. for the we're entire up game. We're gold and we're <laughs> down 20 kills. <laughs> oh, but Jumping. Sissy's there. The sun's going to come down. He may have bitten off more than he can chew here. The damage is going to come. I can't believe this guy. One before he picks up the kill, almost a double. And get away. Oh, oh the feather play caller. Oh, oh my, we're at Venti's flashing it. He's got one. He's got two. Could this be the third? It's a triple kill for Venti. It's a quadruple kill for Venti as soon as he picks up the Blobblitz here. Unbelievable. This man's game is something else. Venti picking up another one for himself. Kill for Venti, Zach State going to go ace for nothing. Hide super low, but doing so much damage to Venti. A thousand gold going over to the there. He's got another ult. He's going to pick up two. That's a triple kill for him. It's a quadra kill for Venti. The Inferno Trigger is going to be unleashed, and it is slowly chipping down the health bars of Montana. Montana's on the great low. Venti is popping off here. He's got another one. He's gonna pick up. And then stolen by Mammo. Oh no! Oh,
Dude, these guys are about to be perplex when they load it in and get it pollinated. Is, they Imagine they one person doesn't these. have it. Let's go! <laughs> 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 and you, they, just, they just now realized what's happening. <laughs> no, this, this is so VM. This is so VM. When all of us get in game, can we all type bzzz? Yes, everyone bzzz in all chat. Wait, how many Z's? How many Z's? Five Z's. Okay. <laughs> 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 Yo, everyone booze on end. That's okay. kind of toxic. No, 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 I'm not booze. I'm not booze. I'm not booze. The booze on end. <laughs> well, that was a game. Jeez, we did it. We did it for the fans. <laughs> okay. We just talking. We talking. Bzz. Bzz. What side do you want? <laughs> Red, does it? <laughs> Red, please. Imagine okay. they ban Yumi, Kogma, and Okay. I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! Oh. Tasty, you and I were talking in between the games. Like, I can't imagine that they throw bans at the B Comp. Like, that would just yeah. be ridiculous. <laughs> but here we are. Rosary for sure drinks soy milk. And back, flashing in with the W, maybe trying to find a kill to get the res off, but will not be the case. Damo and Venti chasing down Azakana here, but their damage is just so low this early on in the game. Venti going to have to flash away, going to be knocked back by the Hecarim E there, and that's going to be a Kaleem 3 for 0 for T-Birds down in the bot lane. P. My bad. Oh, good. It happens. Just limit testing, limit testing. So if we I lose this, are we going back what? to B? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> We gotta go back to B comp. Just executing this 1-3-1 just as you wanted to see. Oh, 50 Rai guys. I'm gonna yeah, call off you, Justin. You Nobody's there yet. Nobody's on top of you yet, Justin. Hecarim's there. And Ezreal now. You have two. Okay. Out of the death realm. But Justin is an absolute raid boss on this Mordekaiser right now. T-Birds has not played as carefully. They could both just fall to this Mordekaiser. Oh, a nice arcane ship going to get Zai. Phoenix P are going to be overnight. Oh, Justin? <laughs> okay. He's actually unkillable. No, he's unkillable. Justin. Yeah, uh, he might dead Ari, but maybe. I don't know. Will he? I mean, this is... Uh, he's uh, not dying. <laughs> he can smurfing, guys. I don't think he's killable. Oh, he's killing them all. Wait, Wait he, he actually isn't going to die. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. He's got four! Don't see this one He killed them all, actually. He won me five, He killed them all. Hello? 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 Okay, boys, I'm telling you, I know the counterpick to their team. It's f***ing Ash, Renata. It's a Teemo angle, boys. It's a Teemo angle. Man, you can start looking cute today. Polly is not running flash. Hitting, hitting. Kinderhook gonna get down the ultimate. Not gonna matter. Hyde's gonna go for the heroics. Will not matter either. 14, 1, and 4 for Venti's Caitlyn. A triple kill to cap off this dominant Sac State win in game one. Oh my god, absolutely crazy. <laughs> you guys won't be getting Monty's breadstick. So, can, you, oh. can you sleep on Mike? You guys can't sleep on Mike? The breadsticks have scores are actually so good. Okay, so Timo Jungle oh is the same It's really good for Timo <sighs> Persona. The re! It is I mean, is there another. Timo can also, game? like, blind them and <laughs> play Timo. <laughs> Bro, I'm <laughs> telling you, I want to play Timo. can play Timo, and, like, while we'll know it's not VM, they might not know it's VM. I mean. Fine, pick me, Zinjao. Wait, Udyr! <laughs> Good, he's in jail, he's in jail. <laughs> I'm, I'm down to play Udyr though, I love the channel. Did you remind me from, of like, Doug from freaking Up right there? It's like, oh wait, squirrel! 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 squirrel. Zach is around here. I have to be careful. Oh, there are two. Let's sit here. Just sit here. Zach? Watch out, I'm on the shot. Get you, me too. Give me strength. Give me strength. Yeah, and, 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 and we got mid. I got eight drops. I, I, I exhaust him. I exhaust him. Justin, run down mid with ult. Er, with ult. Nice. Go mid, go mid. We try to end. We have to end here. Yeah, we'll, we'll end. We'll end. Oh, we can probably Is end through top. Die? 
Wait, where's Zach? That's Nobody this? killed him? Oh, we didn't kill his blobs? Huh? <laughs> 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 I can't believe this guy. Very tricky, tricky bit. Shockwave going to land for XP and X3. And it looks like Sex H is going to wipe this 3v3. Oh, big play out of Garrett. The boss are killed for Venti. Sex H going to go ace for nothing. Huge flash. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, I'm Nick the Lights Azevedo, and I am so excited to be back casting some Sacramento State League of Legends here alongside my good friend and compatriot, Anthony Monte Montez. How are you feeling today, Monte? How's it feel to be back? It's so great to be back casting for Sac State, um, especially casting with you on the desk over here, Nick. Super stoked as well. It looks like the boys are getting right into the draft, so let's get that up here real quick we'll see what what we got going on looking like some some gangplank and swain bands coming out right off the bat we'll see you know gangplank did get some hits um in the b patch here on patch 13.1 uh we'll see seems like there's still going to be a, a decent amount of priority on that one however For sure. But the other champion is getting banned out. Um, Silas is a great flex. He's been played in the jungle lately. Um, on top of being a decent mid lane bruiser, it tends to be pretty difficult to play in a lot of the range matchups that you see. But if you can get through that, it'll be an absolute menace with the right ultimates to steal. And then I think the other noble pick is probably Zeri. Um, very, very popular ADC. Once again, with the enchanters kind of rising up and getting some of the nerfs that happen. All right, currently champion select graphic not wanting to pop up for us. We'll go to a backup here. There we are. I should be able to see that one now. We've got Sejuani locked in first here for Dr. Goon, as we were saying there, and then Cassante going to be the answer for Sacramento State. We're going to be seeing Arthur Dent piloting that one up in the top lane. Currently the highest ranked player in this lobby in solo queue, so... Exciting to see what he can do on this champ. Actually, and I think we were talking about this before the, the stream started, but I think Sejuani, 100% pick ban in LCS this week. Cassante was like 90%. Uh, I think there's only one game where he wasn't pick ban. So two high priority champions definitely showing up for it. For sure, yeah. Very much going to the script. The the B patch, a lot of the changes, like the most notable ones, going to be affecting the bot lane, but we can see the top side here not really too affected by the B patch. This is a lot of what you've been seeing in the competitive leagues around the world. This sort of stuff. Morgana's one you're not seeing very much of, but very much in line with kind of the style that we are generally seeing with bot lanes these days. That being bot lanes that can get uh, the push in the bot lane early on into the game, Morgana Sivir. Great example of that. That lane should be able to get push into quite a lot of the different bot lanes that Sac State could potentially play into it. I was gonna say that if they don't pick the ADC or the support, then that just kind of lets uh, Montana essentially pinch one of those two roles. Uh, it looks like the Kaisen's gonna come out. I'm a little unsure. I mean, I have full faith. Action from it, but usually you play Kaisa with a more aggressive support, uh, like the Nautilus, like Leona, um, maybe even like Pike, just because of the way your passive interacts with CC, like hard CC. All right, there we go. Got the draft graphic back up and working. Awesome. 
they're just looking to outskill the enemy bot lane. Just go for super hyper aggressive, which is kind of something that we're used to seeing, I believe. It is at least definitely a way to go go about it. Big baller shot caller Garrett in that bot side support role likes to make money moves. There's a pinch to support pool for Garrett now. The mid lane is just so so open. The different champions you can pick. Yeah, for sure. picked up in that first round with Cassante being uh, the, the, the first pick for Zach State. Yeah, definitely a, a common answer that you see. It is interesting that they opted not to go for that one. Honestly, I don't know if there's a match for it, like maybe a snowballing Darius. Jen, okay, so that was kind of the other thing that I was thinking maybe yeah. they go for is just like, play to neutralize, which is interesting because like while Cassante is very powerful, that's kind of usually his brand as well, is just neutralizing. Like he's strong enough that you can't really bully him. Like he's similar to kind of like Renekton and Graves, at least in my eyes, where he's stable on the weak side of the map, but not like a total pushover, like a typical weak side tank or something like that might be. And then Garrett gonna be on the barn to round out the comp, so gonna be looking we were talking about before the game what sort of route um garrett might be looking to go here in this sort of meta where roaming is so prevalent and we saw him last year as very much kind of a playmaker like playing the the melee engage supports you know this meta pretty pretty divergent from that sort of idea so gonna be the bard he's gonna kind of meet in the middle with the champ that is ranged can get pushed but can also roam around the map and make some plays A little bit of a divergence from what we would normally see him on. I think near the end of last year, we were seeing him on a little bit of like Renata Glass, which is kind of ballpark. So, really interesting overall pick for the comp. Yeah, definitely. Hmm. And then there was Vex. I was still fiddling with uh, with some of the stream stuff when we saw some of those middle picks get, get locked in. I'm trying to like get my bearings here and see what kind of stuff we've got going on. Vex versus Victor in the mid lane, I would imagine, is going to be Victor favored for much of the game. Vex with a lot of playmaking and pop-off potential later on into the game, though, and should pair up well with Shen and Sejuani, plus the Sivir boosting them all in there. It's a very good kind of dive composition that should be pretty strong in the mid game, and then with the extra scaling from the Sivir. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I, there's plenty of gank opportunities, I think. I mean, Sejuani... Probably not going to do anything topside, just going to leave it completely alone. Um, so I'd imagine we're going to see bot side play from the side of Montana. Um, and probably Sac State too. Yeah, and I mean, that's kind of been the, the meta that you've seen for the most part, at least in pro play thus far this season, is a lot of that. The, the bot lane focus. Um, and then both of these junglers going to be, you know, bolstered in their capabilities to take take fights and make plays after level six. So maybe a little bit slower of an early game in this one. But also, my god, these two champs, Wukong and Sejuani, can do quite a lot of work after level six setting up plays. Wukong going to be putting down big damage. Sejuani going to be putting down completely unreasonable damage given the champion's innate durability. So it could be a brawly one for sure. I think I would uh, expect this one to be a lot of fighting. Yeah, James like Shen and Sejuani, the, the speed keep balls. Um, we are seeing a lot of magic damage just for Kaisa's passive Victor. Um, one super cool thing is though, Wukong should be able to shred armor for any like major key targets on top of like Black Cleaver being a really great item on him. So um, Kaisa can really itemize, do the standard itemization where you, know, you go kind of hybrid. So you can get all those activations. Um, 
and still should be able to just churn out damage. Yeah, looking good. The Kaisa, like, I don't know how much I would want to be playing Kaisa with this team comp. It's probably fine, but it feels really bad playing Kaisa without just, like, a bunch of meatballs with a bunch of CC, and, like, Wukong and Kasante certainly qualify, but I usually like playing Kaisa the best in, like, proper full dive comps, and you've got, like, Victor and Bard that very much want to kind of hang back, and that feels kind of weird. But it should work out okay, and I think, like, my, my main concern would be, like, skirmishes around the Dragon or the bot side River 4v4, much less, like, the 5v5. Kasante definitely going to bridge that gap and provide some of the kind of what I'm talking about that might be lacking. And then the lane I expect to just be brutal, I think, is another thing. Could be really hard for Love Me to lane against uh, Sivir Morgana with Garrett, presumably just kind of running all over the place and doing whatever it is bards do <laughs> in their downtime. So, but yeah, we'll, we'll see how it shakes out. Going to be exciting either way. There we go, we're into it. Did we see anything particularly interesting? I mean, from what I've heard, Bulbasaur is pretty much always the pick for jungles. <laughs> so I believe it offers that, um, that shield. That's how I refer to the new jungle items. They've got full-blown- the Pokemon. Yeah, they've got full-blown novels written for all of them. I just, they're, they're Pokemon to me. particularly strange I think I like the respect from love me picking the cleanse up um, should give Garrett a little bit more agency to know do the things that Bard likes to do in Rome uh, the binding is on a fairly long cooldown early so I mean he can look just play safe if he happens to get caught by one mm -hmm. oh, so. playing with fire going to dodge out of the the oh. binding it's a little late to get a recall I would say yeah, he's going to have to chug a potion and stay in lane. So that feels a little bit bad, but he should be in command of this lane against Vex, I would think. So might not be that much of a loss. One interesting thing, though, with the new season is the introduction of, like, the ward ping, right? Um, if you drop the ward ping, when you do know a ward was dropped, it'll mark it with the timer and the duration for the ward, which is one of those things that was like a skill check before mm -hmm. that can be a little bit more automated. And they're making it too easy for us. We used to have oh, to yeah. do that stuff manually. Timing dragons, timing everything. <laughs> Looks like both junglers are doing the top side into bot side clear. The question is, are we going to see full clears, or are we going to see something like a three or a four camp into a bot side play? I think they... <laughs> I would expect a full clear, honestly. Like, yeah. I just want to look for something, but, I mean, I'm kind of just hoping they full clear. Um, Wukong, what do you do? Pre-6? Yeah. Um, unless someone's, like, at the enemy tower. Yeah, I'm very much hoping they full clear as well. But this bot lane is something that I'm definitely looking at if I'm the junglers, because already not really going to expectation. Garrett and Love Me able to just kind of get the skill check push, despite what I would at least consider to be the inferior pushing lane compared to Silver Morgana should be able to get the push pretty freely as Silver Morgana, I would think. But they had the wave crash into their tower, lost to level two. So we'll see if that changes anything around at all. And it looks like Arthur Dent was able to get a crash up in the top side and hit that Scryer's Bloom to get some info on the top side jungle so they know that Jiguri on the Sejuani is going to be on the bot side right now, which is very important information for Lovey and Garrett, who are, of course, pushed up pretty far. And I believe they do still have that ward in the, in the tribush, so they are totally chilling. 
knowing Sejuani is, is absolutely bot side, it's gonna pretty much have to go through that ward. Or catch uh, Venti in that bot side. For sure. Ooh. Benefits of being Sejuani, just being incredibly tanky and also being able to hop over walls that Arctic Assault. It always seems so odd to me, tanks with mobility. They're pretty common in this game, but it seems like... I don't know, just thematically wrong. Sante, <laughs> man. Don't yeah. Even, like, he's the tankiest fighter that ever existed. <laughs> he's got more mobility than Fiora, I think. Somehow. I buy that. TNX actually doing pretty well in the... the resources battle against Vex, and that might just be the way the champions are built out. Uh, Vex does have CC built. Oh, Gary with the roam, though. Almost able yeah, to pick it up. Good flash. Yeah, it looks like at the end of the day, this is just going to be... XP's able to get the crash, but both mid laners likely going to have to take a recall. Fox is up here, going to land a bind on a Garrett and blow his ignite, but nothing really going to happen there. On the top side, both are <laughs> just be beating the hell out of each other, getting bonus like max health. <laughs> we are kind of getting to see a little bit of a gold lead for Sac State, really just coming off of Ooh, Garrett. Hello. I gotta take a lot of damage there. The the CS lead, I actually think, or the, the gold lead, rather, I think is mostly coming from the jungle, oddly enough, Venti, just with some better pathing, it looks like. So we can see they're uh, pretty tight around the top of the table there, but Venti, the richest man in the game currently, so yeah, gonna be due to that uh, just superior jungle pathing, I guess. I think because he was able to full clear, but Chigiri, I believe, opted to look bot side instead of doing Krugs. Oh, we got a little three-man play coming down on the bot lane. FPS Fox does have the flash available, but just going to go down regardless to Love Me, who's going to pick up the first blood on the Kai'Sa, accelerate himself a little bit. I believe last year we had a, uh, a running gag of Venti Simp, but... Now. now it's Venti doing the simp thing for his AD. Yeah. What goes around comes around. Great play. We love to see it. That is honestly the, the pretty much guaranteed bard angle. You're going to see that at least one time. In for sure. Play. Like, you just kind of have to expect that. And pre-level 6 on the Wukong, you pick up a play, you you get a kill on your AD carry. That's got to feel great. That's a fantastic early game for Sacramento State already. And we've got another one going up toward the mid lane. Venti and Garrett comboing for all these plays, just like back last year when they were in the bot lane. XP actually going to go down to the Comet that's going to find him from FPS Fox TTV, who oh. followed on up. So the trade guild going to come back, but XP still in the lead in this mid lane for the moment. Benefiting Zack State, I'd say you want the gold on the victor. Don't really care to see the gold on the Morgana. I mean, all it really does is... <sighs> That's another thing, Morgana itemization-wise. Like, Zonia's Hourglass is, like, the only thing you really care about. <laughs> um, but you usually don't have enough stats to actually get the ultimate off. So people just tend to... It's a zoning tool. Right. It tends to just be a zoning tool. Garrett taking so much damage. He wants out of this lane now. Arthur Dent with some heavy trading up in the top lane. Just continuing to go. Oh, Garrett could go down here. Fox going to find another kill there despite the gold lead. Arthur Dent up pretty far. Chigiri going to find his way in. Dr. Goon almost dead, but Arthur Dent going to fall instead, and that's actually going to be the kill lead over Montana State here for the first time in the game. Still not quite able to eclipse the gold lead. It's just about dead even. A 
Love me going to take a binding. Tough calls. When the ADC has cleanse and it's like, do you eat that? And the answer is usually no. But. It feels bad either way. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we are coming on to that time where, you know, if you are either going to sneak a dragon or herald early, or now you're probably going to choose one. The recall timings might actually be terrible for Montana, though. And now if they can get, I don't think they're going to get here, but they are actually up or even an itemization across all four of the positions that would potentially be at this dragon play. So it was a, a good thought to get the recall there, get an extra buy-in and be up in itemization for, you know, because your, your bot side is mostly down gold right now. So it's nice to get that, that small timing, but just a little bit too late. Top side's pretty even, but I mean, you do have the benefit of, you know, you know they were bot side, you know they just kind of got a little bit of an infusion of gold. Um, they're probably going to look for a reset. Maybe you can try and make a Herald play. There are quite a few people hanging around the mid lane right now. Kind of looking at this Herald potentially. We've got the 80 carries down bot lane, duking it out. Busty should have a pretty easy time keeping that wave pushed in. Uh, not really letting Love me do anything. Kaisa this early on into the itemization, not really something that's going to just completely one-shot you. No Q evolve in yet, nothing like that. Garrett going to go down again. A nice find there for Shadowco. Onto him. XP going to be the next target. Shadowco's in there, going to pick up a double kill oh, and oh submarine God. in the Shen. They found Venti next as well, and that's a triple kill over to your Vex. That's a great way to accelerate the mid lane. Arthur Dent looks like he's going to fall down here now. And an absolute disaster at the Rift Herald for Sacramento State. Three down in exchange for just Montana State's mid laner. And Montana State going to take a 1,000 gold swing, take this Rift Herald here, and potentially turn that 1,000 gold into even more. Massive from the Vex. I mean, straight up bought the Leandres, ready to go. Um, honestly, it was a great pick. Uh, FPS Fox with the, the binding on, on Garrett there. Yeah, it was a good find. FPS Fox has been on point with the bindings thus far. It feels like every time he's on our screen, he's finding Garrett or finding XP and X, and then the team's able to capitalize on that follow up, take him down. Two deaths already for your, your golden boy Garrett down in the bot lane. I think normally the Morgana, you don't always like to see it just because the black shield gets burned pretty quickly from supports. It's not very big, not very thick. Um, but the binding can't be understated for sure. Any of the squishy members like Kaisa has cleanse, sure. Um, but you can absolutely burn that out. Bard is definitely going to be looking for opportunities, so potentially. Garrett has been proving to be a little bit of an easy target. So far as oh, let me go ahead and have to burn the cleanse there. From We were just literally in the middle of the point of him finding all of these bindings. Garrett made his way up into the top lane now. Venti alongside him. Dr. Goon with the flash and dash out of there. Going to be able to escape that gank, however. Oh, yeah. Crucial timing. Like you said, like they get this free reign to crash this Rift Herald into their bot tower. And this ought to accelerate Busty well ahead of Love Me down in the bot lane. I think FPS is still, yeah. Not gonna be able to funnel it, but um, I think that's okay. It does, it does actually look like, I'm pretty sure that's the itemization for... Ooh, Vex is hurting, Garrett can just die. He's got a reset. Do they look for it? He's going in, he's got so much damage. XP and X going to go down again. Yeah. Xbox, the Morgana tick, the comment, what can you do? Venti's kind of left to not really be able to do very much here. Last plate going over to Montana there. So now if you're Sacramento State here, Things are starting to look pretty rough. I would pin this composition as the one that should be able to get more done in the early game and has the inferior scaling, generally speaking. 
I would say that Victor outscales Vex, but Sivir I would also say outscales Kai'Sa more so. So it's getting a little dire seeing a 3,000 gold deficit roughly here prior to the 15 minute mark for what should be the composition with more agency early on into the game. We'll see. I'm not really too sure what other options you could look towards here if uh, maybe the fights thus far just haven't been great ones for them or what you really look to do here, but something's going to have to happen for Sacramento State. Yeah, honestly, if they can't find a pick here before looking to do the Drake, I, it, I would be willing to say that they should probably just give it. This could be it. This is the pick. Looks like he got... Oh, that, that's, that's all they're going to get, though. Looks... Uh... They felt that the collapse came in quick enough for them to it's, get zoned off, I guess. It's absolutely one of those things um, where the Bard ultimate can be a great tool for finding picks, but also it can just kind of buy time for the enemy team also to close the distance. Um, so finding the, the correct time to use the, uh, the tempered fate can be a little difficult for sure. That's going to be... Dragons answered back by Montana State. Tied in the dragon count. We're going to have a Hextech Soul later on into the game. Okay, so I don't know if the, the jury's out or not, but I remember this was absolutely the most cracked dragon before. It's pretty good. Top of being one of the more interesting maps, for sure, just because the hex gates oh, yeah. uh, and bard being a thing. Because you can use it to... Bard can use it to get way deeper than he really should be able to normally, and also just like, I think the channel time is enough that you might be able to get out of Tempered Fates if he's throwing it far enough. That'd be cheeky. I mean, Harold coming up in just under two minutes. Oh, and so... Probably another give. It's probably another give me for Montana. Because of all the early kills... Oh, hold that thought, actually, as we got a little play on the Dr. Goon. This guy, this is a tanky Shen, though. Arthur Dent able to hold him in place for so very long, though. It's just not a lot of damage. They're going to tempered fate the tower, and they do take him down eventually. Nice little swing of gold back for the boys. Tigri and FPS Fox going to answer back the top lane push. And again with these bindings... Soul Shackle's going to come down. Venti going to have to flash out of that one. Don't want to take up the tower shots on top of that. But what I was saying, FPS Fox on this Morgana has been all over the map, finding three kills and four assists thus far. And just the action again. Love me going to have to use the cleanse, going to take about half of his HP, but he actually comes out of it better off than Shadowco, minus the exchange of summoners there. But yeah, FPS Fox has a Leandry's done. Which, Shen has his heart steel now, but it was actually before <laughs> his top later. Gold. <laughs> yeah, FPS Fox is like 20 gold over the Shen right now. Add the support. You can see there, we got fighting in the oh. mid lane here. Got a teleport coming through. Looks like that's going to be the end of it, though, actually. Nobody going to go down. Even for comps that are engage focused, but we don't have much in the way of engage once Wukong's ultimate's out. Like, it's pretty much that. You kind of hope to combo it, I guess, into a gravity well or a stun from Bard. But with Garrett being knocked out so early there, there's not a lot you can do. Yeah, the Bard pick hasn't looked the greatest thus far. 0 4 for Garrett. Only finding 100% KP, but in a game where. You're less than half the kills of the enemy team, so it's been a rough one. We'll see if they can turn that around. Yeah, I mean, they're going to need to try and see if they can slow this game down. I mean, they've been looking for picks, but I mean, at this point, it kind of you got to pick your battles. I mean, you go for this crazy meatball Shen who's just way too thick for where they're at in the game right now. Or you have to, like, honestly, Busty's probably the quote unquote easiest target, but having the spell shield and the Sivir is also pretty difficult to work around. The big thing you have going for you is the range advantage, potentially, I could see, with something like like Victor obviously outranges Sivir in most situations by quite a bit, and you can't spell shield everything Victor has. So maybe XP able to find an angle onto Busty and then uh, get that one shot off, and then the damage can be 
a little lacking as Shen, as a um, Vex rather won't be able to just one shot most of the Sacramento State lineup later on into the game. I can agree with this angle if they want to commit to it, but I do find it weird that Montana is having... Oh, looking for a play on the Busty in the mid lane. He's going to go down. Nice little pick there for Sac State there. Oh, man. Great play. Great pick. I'm saying Busty is the easy target. And with Drake coming up here very soon, it might give Sac State the opportunity to maybe a little bit of a right for Pryo. Gang's pretty far away though. Nah, honestly, you should probably just give this drink. Isante no P no TP. Shen has his ultimate and TP. You do, however, have pretty good itemization going on here in terms of spent gold. Sacramento State in a pretty good spot to be able to fight this if they wanted to. Actually up a completed item in the top lane. And then even itemization everywhere else. Arthur Dent could have a flank here thanks to the Hex Gate. Tempered Fate going to just find Chigiri. Arthur Dent doing some zoning and Sac State actually going to take down the Dragon. We'll see if Arthur Dent can make it out of this one. He's a tanky boy. Should be able to jump over that wall. Looks like it's okay, and Sac State just going to take the dragon cleanly there. Good stuff. Did not expect Montana to just kind of give that so freely. Yeah. Probably just very likely worried about seeing Cassante jump over that wall. Worry about that pincer. I don't hate the idea. Oh, Venti looking for the play, going to get tons of damage down onto Busty. Arthur Dent got a great flank as well. Going to find Shadow Co. Blow him up. That's a quick three going down for Montana State. Just like that, Sac State picks up the dragon, and now they're on to the Baron after taking down three. Yeah, there shouldn't really be any counterplay on this. Hopefully, Garrett's health bar is really low. I'm not sure he's going to be able to stick around very much. But should be easy Baron pick up here. Otherwise, and it's a question of like what you think they're going to get with it. I'm hoping they can knock out, at least get up to the inhibs themselves a lot more control over the map. Chigiri, <laughs> get a, just get a solo kill on XP, I guess. Good stuff to see your your jungler on the tank pick picking up a solo kill on the mid laner. Sejuani is an absolute menace. <laughs> <laughs> like even back in last season. When, when it was a top lane pick. Just the, uh, that permafrost damage, man. So much. More on point bindings out of FPS Fox there. Keeping himself safe from Arthur Dent, who was closing in. State, no major objectives besides the the Baron just kind of waiting for that to to peter out, peter out. Let's see if they actually want to defend this tier one on this. That cannon's gonna take it down here in another auto, or it can have one HP. You know? Oh no way! Actually, <laughs> is that? I'm not sure if that's the spectator bug or if that tower is actually one HP. It seems to be... What HP? <laughs> Absolutely insane. <laughs> Talk about a land on XP. XP's gonna die. This Shen hurts. Oh He's slapping God. him down. One more auto will do it. Dr. Goon with a solo kill. Shadow Co. in a lot of danger underneath the tower, though. Garrett going to trade his life back, but they're down on FPS Fox with the Shen ultimate going to come through. Busty's hitting, laying in lots of damage with the ricochets. Venti jumping in, but going to eat a binding. Dr. Goon's in now, going to pick up the kill on the Love Me. Fox DTV with a sliver of health, going to make it out of there. Lands the binding onto Arthur Dent, and Sacramento State is aced. Way, way overextended.
on that dive there. The Tempered Fate unfortunately caught Arthur Dent, so the dive was slowed way significantly. So much to see from Cassante just neutralized with that little uh, <laughs> interaction there. They were doing great on that play leading up to the bear, but the, the over-aggression, they might need to just kind of pull back on the reins a little bit. That's like, you, you're feeling good. They had a, a big, they're actually still up gold, bizarrely, but, you know, they had a big swing in the game right before that. We're in the most commanding position they had been in thus far in this game and just pushed it a little too far, and now they're right back to basically even. A lot of damage. And like, Vex is already pretty far ahead. It was pretty much one-shotting anyone that wasn't Cassante or Wukong. It's probably just gonna keep that snowball rolling. Start it up. Saxe should have the damage. Separate Fate going to whiff. Binding on XP and X too far away for the follow-up to come through. We got a coin flip this? Dragon at about half HP. Looks like it's going to be a good old burger flip. Tons of damage going to land on XP and X. He's going to go down right away. Shadow goes into the middle of the team, though. Going to trade his life for XP and X. Chiggery buying space. Venti going to pick up the dragon. And so far, it's a three for one in favor of Sac State. They're chasing down Busty. Garrett looking for the flash bind, going to whiff that one though, unfortunately. Arthur Dent looking to chase him down. Love me's in with the ultimate. A lot of Kaisa damage coming through, but actually not going to finish off that kill. Think he had that one for free, personally, but it is what it is. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if the Shen ultimate target just died. Must have. He did not make it down there. Hey, Sac State, sole point with the Hextech Drake. Baron's up in 30 seconds. They're in a super commanding position. They just gotta really keep doing what they've been doing. Excellent fights, excellent positioning from Arthur Dent. I mean, absolute menace on Montana's back lane, backside. Yeah, he's been real good on the Cassante thus far. Had a little bit of a rough early game going down to some ganks and, and whatnot. But in these fights late game, been buying tons of space, finding good flanks onto the back line, and like you said, just tearing it up. Sac State starting up the Baron, and Montana State doesn't doesn't really seem to know yet. FPS Fox now sniffs it out. Do have some members in the area, but the Baron's too low. Just going to go down to Sac State, uncontested.
right, we'll, we'll see what Sac State can get done with this Baron buff here. Should be able to make some more stuff happen. Look at it, just 1-3-1 one, one it at the moment is kind of what it's looking like. See what kind of pressure we can get going there. Chigari going to be caught by the Temper Fate, going to have to flash out right away. That's a tanky Sejuani. The Shen ultimate going to come in as well, but that's just going to be put on cooldown as Chigari going to go down either way. And now Sacramento State with a numbers advantage and quite a bit of pressure here. Love me looking to make a big play. Shadowco going to go down. Venti and XP both in to join him. Love me with the cleanse. He wants more. He's getting after it. FPS Fox doing a lot of damage, though, and the Ignite going to finish off the kill on the Love Me. Arthur Dent deep into the base now. Look at that. It's looking like it could be tricky. Dr. Goon tanky, though, can buy a lot of time. The flash out going to get him to safety for the moment. Fox going to fall, though. Dr. Goon going to get locked up by the Tempered Fate. And Chigiri, the initial pick that started this play, has now respawned. Dr. Goon going to trade a kill back. And now I don't think Sacramento State can finish off this game. They're 2v2 here. Arthur dead with the hex gate out. Going to make it out of there. And MSU will hold the line. One Nexus Tower going to fall, but... Licking their wounds and actually in a better position to make a play on this dragon that'll be coming up in just a moment here. Arthur 10 still getting chased down. Oh. You gotta pause. Here, 31 minutes in. We'll see what that's about. Seems like Garrett having some connection issues is the word I'm getting. Yeah, it's it's pretty tough. I mean, the Drake's coming up. This is supposed to be Sac State's soul point. Uh, they're down three members. So it's going to be 2v3. Honestly, you could still pull it off. Uh, Big Wukong Ultimate definitely sets up Love Me. Yeah, Venti kind of quietly been playing really well this game, finding a lot of engages. Handful of kills for himself on the Wukong. Three items in here now, and this is going to be a time to show up once again. Going to be a really tricky situation to play. I don't think there's necessarily a need to contest this dragon if you're Sacramento State with three members on the pad. Yeah, I mean, you can just relax, let all five members come up. Um, if you have to give up this Drake, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But hey, I mean, if they want to, if they want to look for the fight, two v three. I think this is probably the thing to do. I mean, Love Me absolutely cannot get hit with the binding. Actually, it's Morgana's not the one over there. Who's over there? Looks like it's Shen. Shen Saver Vex. Yeah, I don't know. Just kidding. I thought it was Morgana over there. I don't think they should look to do anything here. <laughs> They've been known to do some crazy stuff. And Love Me does have a lot of gold and showed in the base just a moment ago that he's he's willing to get in there and get a little wild. Yeah, honestly, if they're able to one-shot Shadoko, it's pretty tough pretty big ask but i think if shadoko goes down quickly it's it's possible i feel at this point it's pretty hard for vex to kill anybody outside of xp who's one and seven and kaisa who has you know both summoners down now but also has the ultimate and the invis and the movement speed and all that like it's 
it's not very easy to pilot Vex this late in the game. Like, you're not one-shotting Cassante or Venti. So it's either you get on to love me or you're one-shotting somebody who's <laughs> having a real rough game like XP or Garrett haven't done a whole lot. Then you got a Busty, three items done on the Sivir, getting up to that super frightening Sivir late game that we all know and love. Looks like we are back into the game. This is something that always happens after pauses on the stream. Likes to pause here again for just a moment, so. We'll just give that a second. Montana actually going to be able to pick up that dragon there. Sex State looking for an angle, though, with the respawn timers. Venti jumping in, going to find a big ultimate into a big tempered fade out of Garrett. This could be the wombo they were looking for. Love me over the wall, going to be able to find a lot of damage. Shadowco going to go down to Love Me's dive. Chigiri going to go down. Dr. Goon looks like he's going to be next. Sex State picking up four kills off of the dragon, and I think they are poised to just march this one in. They're on to the inhib. Minion's going to hit the tower. I don't think FPS Fox on his own going to be able to do a whole lot about this one. Looks like he's going to go down. That Nexus is going to go down. And Sac State going to take this one. Bring the match score to 1-0. Stick around for game two. Oh, but Jumping. CC's there. The sun's going to come down. He may have bitten off more than he can chew here. The damage is going to come. I can't believe this guy. One before he picks up the kill. Almost a double. And gets away. <laughs> Oh, the feather! Play caller. Oh my word, Venti's flashing it. He's got one. He's got two. Could this be the third? It's a triple kill for Venti. It's a quadruple kill for Venti as soon as he picks up the Blobblitz here. Unbelievable! This man's capable of something else. Venti picking up another one for himself. Going to go ace for nothing. I'm super low, but doing so much damage. You mentioned a thousand gold going over to the spear there. He's got another ulti. He's going to pick up two. That's a triple kill for him. It's a quadra kill for Venti. The infrastructure is going to be unleashed, and it is slowly chipping down to help Barth of Montana. Montana's on the great low. Venti is popping off here. He's got another one. He's gonna pick up! And then stolen by the ammo. Oh no! Oh, oh.
Dude, these guys are about to be perplex when they load in and get pollinated. Imagine one, one person doesn't somebody. have it. Let's go! <laughs> 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 and you, they, just, they just now realized what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> this is so BM. This is so BM. When all of us get in game, can we all type bzzz? <laughs> yes, I, I wrote bzzz in all that. Okay, how many Z's? How many Z's? Five Z's. Okay. <laughs> Yo, everyone booze on end. That's kind of toxic. No, 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 yeah, we, um, Sac State able to take the dub in game one, now up 1-0 here in this best of three against Montana State. It was a pretty back and forth game though, all things considered, Sac State able to take it out in the end and up gold for most of the game, but there was, it was a real swingy one. We'll see if anybody wants to change up anything in the, uh, in the draft, see what goes down. A lot of the bands looking similar thus far. Uh, what do you think, if you're Montana and going into this game, Monty, is there anything you would want to see switched up? Anything you definitely want to keep from last game? Uh, I think the the Shen pick was pretty good. The the timing on some stuff just didn't seem to work out. Um, a couple of the Shen ulti targets looks like they looked like they died before he was able to get over there. And the other thing I was going to say is Cassante ban. <laughs> um, <laughs> God damn, is that boy thick. <laughs> Yeah, the lane, not the most impressive thing in the world, but late game, absolute menace. Him and Venti both really on that kind of bruiser duo up in the top side. So this is something that I don't think I've got to see in the like organized pro play. Um, Caitlyn has been like a big priority for, for fans. Um, I know she in general has the overall like largest range just consistently um, from level one really only outpaced by like Tristana at like 18 and like maybe Kog'Maw when he gets the max rank by Arcane Barrage. Um, but I'm not 100% sure what pushed her to be such a high priority ADC. I think you said it. I think it is just priority on the wave. That's kind of all there really is to it. Sivir a great matchup into it though, in my experience. And um, Montana State is going to lock in the same bot lane that they piloted last time around as it was quite successful by um, by my thinking, at least, I think the bot lane for Montana played very, very well last game and put on a good showing, especially FPS Fox able to land clutch bindings throughout the entirety of that game. And then Busty quietly scaling up on that Sivir, not quite able to get to that critical mass point that you like to see the Sivir really start to take over games. But this is a very different look for Sac State here with a pretty strictly lane dominant bot lane in the Caitlyn Karma. So we'll see how Montana State's able to match up against that. Okay, so looking over just kind of like the champion play rates and everything we did see a lot of the junglers kind of lean towards the tanks uh, just because you do have access to additional like healing shielding and that stuff through Bulbasaur um, the new tank items are all pretty good um, being able to offer some like healing for your team in, in team fights and just overall make yourself a massive meatball uh, plus they, they moved I think some items that were mythics uh, down Right, like Sunfire Aegis is something I think you can pick up right. uh, as a normal item. Uh, if you are going kind of AP, I know Zach likes to go like Demonic Embrace, some sort of hybrid itemization option, or you can go full tank with like Abyssal Mask and it's still pretty good. So it's just kind of interesting how the, the jungle is skewed a little bit towards more towards bruises and tanks. And you know, I let you finish the point. I think it's very valid, but we had a very kind of divergent jungle pick picked up here by Tigri on uh, Montana State, or at least I expect it to be jungle, and that is the Shavana pick coming in, typically a champion that you see farm up really hard throughout the first, you know, like six plus levels of the game, and then is usually just way more farmed and can 1v1 anybody. Zach definitely being one of, one of the champions that you tend to be able to 1v1 on that champion, so we'll see what Tigri's looking to get done with the Shivana pick. Definitely a 
one that you don't see too terribly often. And then uh, just a lot of top lane bans coming through for Sac State here. Uh, the Shen going to be banned away, Jack's going to be banned away. And then um, Montana State, I guess, thought XPNX's Victor was just too big of a problem. Not going to let him have that one again. And then Gragas, another safe top lane pick, going to be taken away. And then Vagar here, so a ton of scaling drafted thus far for um, Montana State. We'll see what uh, Sac State's looking to answer into something like that. <laughs> okay, so the hard trolling with Draven Hover. Um, but yeah, Vagar is actually a pretty good answer to Sac. Uh, being able to just drop the baby cage and stop Zach from kind of jumping in from Narnia, you know. Ooh, I wasn't sure if you were going to see it. Um, I, I do kind of like the the introduction, the reintroduction of Rod of Ages um, and just bringing back the mana base champions. So like Rise, Cassidy, Cassiopeia, and Nevia. Uh, I think even Twisted Fate has kind of seen a little bit more play. Yeah, Rise will be excited to see how that one how that one goes. You get a lot more options. It's yeah, that's interesting. So with the Rise, you you get an incredibly powerful side laner, right? Like like this 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 composition speaks one three one to me very much with the safety and wave clear that the, your bot lane is going to have, and then you have Rise that can hold down a side lane very well, Jace that can hold down a side lane very well. And then you have Zach as oh, like oh. maybe some options if you want for some engages. I'm not sure how the Jace Tom Kench matchup goes, but I hate playing against Tom Kench top as anyone, so sounds rough. I don't know. Arthur Dent, pretty good player, so we'll see what he's able to make happen up there in that top lane. I'm not percent sure what the big sky rules are, but like I don't know. If I were either of them, I'd be like, Can we lane swap? <laughs> <laughs> um, like Rise, I think he's got a little bit more range than he used to, um, but I mean, still like Vega having a little bit more control and being able to fight behind the minion wave, Rise is a little more, bit more limited, um, requiring to like combo, blow a little, little bit more mana if he wants to be able to fight through a minion wave. Um, Jace is gonna have a very, very hard time um, putting put dents in Tom Kench's health bar, I think. Um, but with Shivana jungle, I don't know if this can be much so like if Arthur can get a lead, right? I think he should be able to just run with it. But like if anything goes south, it should just be pretty bad. And that's kind of Jace, right? I mean, sounds about par for the course for this champ. And it's just going to come down to how Arthur Dent executes, I think. See what, what he's able to, to get done up there. One thing, too, I knew back in the day AP Shivana was a thing. I'd imagine this is just going to be the tank variant. I mean, you have Simmer, you have Vagar. Yeah. You have these major scaling threads. It's probably not going to be a thing. But, I mean, Demonic Embrace on tank champions. Little uh, nasty. Even Shivana, yeah. Shivana, like, it, it gives her probably just enough damage to be a threat for the squishy champions, like Jace, Caitlyn, Karma. Um, but also still gives her that health that she really looks for. Yeah, definitely. I, I, would, I would expect... Um bruiser in some capacity whether it's the old school on hit bruiser that we're used to or like demonic embrace uh like you were saying expect one of those two i don't think we'll be seeing like the full on like nashers and um what's that one item uh night harvester i don't, I don't think we're seeing like ap one shot or anything like that but actually funny uh both junglers kind of like demonic embrace and like being more of that, that's like, true health ap damage like melter which is kind of funny. We're, we're talking about Shivana. Like, like Zach's not the most normal pick in the world either. It looks pretty vanilla compared to Shivana, but that's another kind of kind of out there pick that we've got going on here. And I think it's going to be important for Venti to be able to leverage the early ganking potential of Zach to make sure that his lanes either stay ahead or get ahead in the first place, because I think it's going to be very rough to play this game out from behind as Sacramento State since Montana State's scaling is just ridiculous. And I don't think there's any point in the game where you can team fight 5v5 as Sacramento State without a huge gold lead. And then your other win condition of winning in the side lane is also made easier if you're ahead, of course, or like even possible. So it's gonna be very important for Sacramento State to get out to early leads, get pushing their lanes. And uh, I think Venti's going to likely be instrumental in 
making that um, a reality. Just wondering where do you play, right? If you're the Zac. Um, realistically, there shouldn't be any reason that Vega has to drop the baby cage unless he sees the Zac shadow coming through. Right. Um, which should make mid a bit difficult unless you have Garrett come up and make him blow it. Um, and then if he plays a little aggressively, like, I mean, does he just look topside? Just try to get the Jays ahead early? Because, I mean, trying to do Sivir with the Spell Shield uh, and also Morgana with the Black Shield seems pretty tough. But, I mean, maybe you look for a Tower Dive when Ryze is, like, six. Right, you've got, like... Or Man Pop Red. Yeah, you've got, like, the... The the Ryze gank assist for the Vagar is obviously great, but Vagar is also incredible at countering a potential Zack gank with the baby cage, since, like you said, he shouldn't really ever have a need to drop the thing. And then on top of that, like, in the top lane, like, yeah, I think you're probably wanting to gank for Jace, but also it's Tom Kench, and that feels kind of bad. And then your bot lane both has no gank assist and will probably be pushing, ideally, and they have two spell shields, so it's just brutal. I would expect probably top lane to be the main place Venti's looking. Once again, no real surprising pickups here. Love me respecting the bot lane again with the cleanse. No, ac whoa, actually, just kidding. One thing, uh, we have Ghost Flash on the top. Oh, yeah. I think in the last game. Oh, the Garrett could be in a pickle. Oh, never mind. Team doesn't want to follow. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, but last game we saw Shadoko going with the Flashing Knight on Vex. Um, and now we're seeing Dr. Goon opting for the uh, double, like, more utility based summoners, but not having access to the teleport. Right, and I, I think that seems pretty bad to me with this comp that you draft that is going to want to 5v5 team fight is going to be incredibly powerful in those 5v5 team fights. You're going to be forced to answer Jace for a lot of the game, of course. Like, so I think the teleport is just so, so valuable. Like you could even play 4-1, right? Right. Like with XP bouncing in between, just for threat. Um, and yeah, you have to answer the Jace. If you don't, he's going to knock down turrets. If you just blink. So now everything looks pretty standard here in this early game so far. We got double Bulbasaur again. We've got uh, Love Me and Garrett able to get the push early in the bot lane so far at least. About to hit level 2 here. Garrett taking a bunch of damage before the level 2 comes in, but very in control of the lane now. FPS Fox going to take a ton of damage. Love Me going to flash in for the kill. The headshot going to pick up that one. We'll see if Busty can trade it back. He will be able to trade it back. That's a big wave, but... Garrett's Karma does do a reasonable amount of damage. Pretty tough. I mean, overall, it's it doesn't have been one for one. Sad part is that we did lose Love Me. Um, so Bussy is going to be able to get the solo XP, which tends to work out better. Right. But both the kills did go to the ADCs, and Love Me will come back with uh, the longsword on top of the Dorans. Busty might be forced to stay here in this lane. It looks like it. He wasn't able to push it out because Garrett didn't die and kept that lane shoved in like that. Venti going to give some proximity to this bottom side now. Not seen on a ward. FPS Fox is level 1. Busty is level 3, going to have access to the spell shield, but this could very well be diveable. Well, he's getting pretty small. We'll see if Busty and FPS Fox are able to thin this one out. Yeah, it's it's going to be a tough tough one to pull off this early in the game. Or second, another wave in. I think they're going to go for it. I mean, Venti's just been hanging out down here the whole time. Yep, going to come through. Focus Slingshot going to, oh, going to miss, but Venti able to get the next half onto it there. The Bloblets. Going to drop tower aggro from Venti. Oh, he picked it back up, I guess. 
no. Does that yeah. blobs not drop tower aggro? I thought they did. It does, I mean, clearly they the don't. <laughs> might focus on the blobs. Gotcha. I'm not 100% sure. Chigiri making his way down now. I don't know how that 2v2 goes. Dr. Goon getting aggressive. Arthur Dent should be able to take quite a good trade into him here. Will indeed. Oh, love me with the filthy Caitlyn play there. Oh, my. Able to take the down combo. FPS Fox. Garrett looking for a root onto you cannot spell shield like that against Karva. Going to be tons of. He canceled the headshot! Oh, no. Love me missing out on a free kill there, unfortunately. Had that nasty play earlier and then had to be brought d back down to earth a little bit with a misplay there. Unfortunate. Backstate absolutely solidifying <laughs> a bot side advantage. Um, love me. It's early in the game, so it doesn't mean as much, but double to the CS uh, yeah. of Busty. That'll peter out as the game goes on, but hasn't been able to spend it yet. And Love Me and Garrett actually first and second for most gold in this game at the moment. The entirety of Sac State's gold lead coming from that bottom lane. I do wonder if they're gonna, I mean, they have such a big lead. I wonder if they're gonna look for the early Drake or you know, if they're just gonna look to play the game standard, not try and have any major throws or anything early. And that's going to be Shadow because Flash going down. Garrett making a little move up into the mid lane, going to get a Flash out of it. XP literally just throwing the root down, one of the freest Flashes you can get. That uh, is negative damage up in the top side. I think Goon did more damage procking Grasp. Than just about. Just about. Chase combo. That's just one of those things. I mean, he can pick up the... Uh that item. Warden's Mail, I believe, right? Just reduces the damage from subsequent attacks and everything. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure that's the pickup in the Jace. And seeing us in a lot of the lanes, with the exception of bot lane going pretty even, like, less than a wave advantage everywhere except for the bot lane. But this bot lane is all Sacramento State at the moment. Oh, free headshot. Absolutely have to be respectful of where Caitlyn's standing if you're going to look to try and, you know, eat one of those traps that... The cheeky traps they put around the tower. For sure. And now Venti on a reset here. Gonna go up to his blue buff. We have XP and X moving up to the top lane. I want to see this bot lane control get turned into some dragons here sometime soon. As <laughs> love me going to just pick up another one. He's going down. Upside. Just too easy. Arthur Dent taking a lot of damage. Oh, and actually going to get taken down. Dr. Goo with the outplay up here in the top side. Ooh. Venti made his way in to support XP and X. Looks like Dr. Goon's going to go down at the end of it, though. So that's going to be a one-for-one. One. XP going to be able to push out the lane, and they're looking for an answer play down on the bottom side, but nothing going to come of it. Looked like Garrett did have to blow both summoners there. Love me. Going to have to expend the cleanse. But now, see, I don't like this, because now Montana State going to be able to pick up this dragon pretty much for free with Venti on the top side, looking at that Rift Herald. And then with Dr. Goon out playing, your Jace isn't even really ahead. Yeah, I think the only real benefit that they, like quote unquote benefit, right, is the, the cash infusion that they're gonna get by being able to drop this Herald. Question is where? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, like giving it to Rise doesn't seem like a bad idea. Um, you can also just kind of further accelerate Love Me on the Caitlyn and look to knock out that bot side tower. I think all three right. lanes are decent options. And usually, if you don't know where to drop a Herald, you should probably just drop it mid. Yeah. I mean, I think I think Derise is, is like, the de facto scaler here. Right. Um, 
and it's not like it puts them at a crazy disadvantage because I mean sometimes there is an argument to not take a tower too early. Right. Um, but you do like, want to you want to get rise out on the map, right? And yes. knocking that mid lane tower down going to be something that enables that quite heavily. And I talk about it all the time on the broadcast how important it is to knock down mid tower and how difficult it can be against uh, control mages like Vagar that really just want to sit in front of their tower and wave clear for the entire game. The Rift Herald can really help make up that difference. Vagar, not really known for being a great side leader. Definitely not. Very favorable position to be in for Sac State if they can get that side lane matchup. Um, so, Tom Kench has a blasting wand. Oh, is this some demonic Tom Kench? Demonic indeed. Demonic indeed. Holy. That's very interesting. Rod of Ages before 10 minutes picked up for XPNX. Yeah, having a much better go of it this game, at least so far. We can take a look at individual gold. Yeah, actually the second richest man in the game. Well above his lane opponent there. XP and Love Me top in the charts. That's what you like to see if you're a Sacramento State fan. The two carries top in the charts. And Arthur Dent! Making up a little bit of what went on earlier. Able to get a really good trade onto Dr. Goon there. But, <laughs> my god. Top catch is so obnoxious, man. Looks like it's gonna be the focus on the bot side. Oh! He flashed looking for the play onto Dr. Goon. Dr. Goon flashes the other way. That's gonna be Chigiri picking up a kill. The Jace pick not really panning out, boys. It was, I mean, like, there's so many other things, right? You probably could have picked. Um, maybe they figure if things go go poorly, they they've got it locked down in the other lanes. Um, might have been feeling himself after the Cassante game. I'm not sure. Menti, the play on a Shadow Funny. Kill. Love me dancing around inside the baby cage. The oh. members of Montana so low, but so are the members of Sacramento State. Hey, oh, you know what? I was like, dang, Love me's dead, but nah, I mean, Vigar has no items. Yeah. Hey, you mentioned it earlier. Uh, oh, maybe, no like, maybe like what five, six. Game, man? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. We got Nashers on them. It is like an AP Shivana. Okay, so he is just Not going big. for the full one shot AP build. All right. But I mean, like, I, I guess, I don't know. I feel like it's tough. I feel like it's tough, right? To like kill the Caitlyn? Yeah, but, you, uh, you don't have any backline access, right? It's like. A full squish Shivana just throwing her carcass into the back line. Like, maybe Tom Kench can chase her down, but you've got Peel from Rise and Karma coming through. That net cl like, cleanses me. Yeah. Through, like, Karma shields, Mantra shield. It's rough. Oh. oh my god, Tom Kench damage is silly. Able to outplay that gank again, and Dr. Goon been the, the sole source of hope for this Montana State team this game. What I would say is a little bit of a ridiculous build. Uh, well played by Sac State there. Able to get that dive off on the top lane. I cast or curse the mana. I apologize. <laughs> oh, Gary going to take a binding. <laughs> PS Fox can't get it up, though. The support was there. Too dangerous to go in for the one auto. Break up real soon, 10 seconds. Yeah, that's going to be up, and it's if Sac State gets there first, it's going to be nearly impossible for Montana State to do anything. But Sac State did all just take some reset timers, though. It's only Love Me and Venti out on the map right now. It seems like Montana State knows it. Looking for a play on the Love Me binding, going to land for FPS Fox. Oh, no. Venti going to get locked up by the baby cage out of Shadow Co., but... Looks like there's no follow-up damage on either of the catches. I would have liked to have seen Montana State be a little more decisive there, go for that play, but I suppose the lack of vision in the red side jungle of Sac State meant that it was a little too dangerous to go forward there. Like if you're 
Either sex they or oh my god that damage though. Gary ain't messing around. <laughs> um if you're Montana, like you have to easy yep. Oh well, Lummy just wants this. Busty knows you can't take this one, not quite going to go down, but oh, love me the charge. all That's over it. it. <laughs> but I was say, like if you're Montana State, you see an Infernal Drake with a Sivir Vagar and AP Shivana, you absolutely Oh love, love me does not want this one though. Dr. Goon can pick a fat shutdown up for himself. Meanwhile, Garrett is just solo killing Chigari in his own jungle. Oh no solo kill, Venti and XP were there. Shadow go getting chased down now. XP and Venti. They should kill him eventually. Yeah, no flash yep. or anything. It's Gotta give the kill over to XP. And I think we were talking about it like at the beginning of the, maybe before the cast at the very beginning, I think it might have been before, um, had that Eclipse, I believe, lost the omni uh, So now it's just kind of ability haste lethality, just straight up like damage. And the omni -Vamp was very valuable on a champion like Jace, where the sustain on the sideline is very, very valuable, can keep you out on the map for longer. You know, that's completely ignoring the value that it gives you in the fights where it gives you, you know, this extra effective HP since you're hitting things and healing off of it. Yes, I mean, it's, and not to mention the item is just like extra nerfed on Jace because it's in for range champ. Uh, right. Pulling into a Tom catch, but. XP looking like oh, he's in a bit of trouble here. Oh, there's no way. Cheeger, he's got a lot of damage. He looks like it's just phase rush bolt on out of there. Arthur Dentizen hey. wants a piece of this. Oh man, the Caitlyn range. Yeah, love me 2v1 zoning off the enemy bot lane here in the mid lane. Sivir though, if she's able to hit the wave just a few times, she can typically match most champions. Oh yeah, I think Sivir's still the queen of the wave clear. Oh my god, Morgana though. Fox is not oh, and able to cancel Dr. Goon's W. He's going to go down. Garrett going to claim Absolutely. one back. Oh, poor Shell, he resets. Busty going to have to flash heal out of that situation. Bounties are up for Montana. So towers are going to get them a little bit of bonus gold. Yeah, over 7k before 17 minutes is not a spot you want to be in. Yeah, not not quite so much. I mean, we got one, we got an Everfrost, which I think might be the cheapest, cheapest like, made Mythic finish for Shadoko. Um, meanwhile, Mythics and then, like, half of the next item is done for, across the board for Sac State. Right. So ahead in itemization. Looking for a play onto Sac State in the top side here. XP going to be eaten up and thrown into the tower. It looks like he's going to be able to walk that one off, though. Arthur Dent looking to get aggressive here. Oh, he looks way too deep to me, however. Montana State could be able to turn this one around. FPS Fox going to get rooted up there, though. It looks like that'll be the end of the chase. Just going to be a one for one. Which, if you're Montana, is totally fine. You know, trading evenly in a situation where you're this far down is just about the best thing you can look for. We'll say that whole time we had Love Me in the mid lane, right? Just solo farming, solo XP. Uh, should be pretty cool. Look at that. Tier 2 mid down. So, I mean, if you're Sac State, you stay worth, honestly. Pushing that gold lead up to 8k. I'm not sure. Do we have access to. The fancy, fancy tools. The fancy, fancy tools? What'd you have in mind? Uh, maybe the gold. Gold, gold graph? I can do a gold graph. Oh, as you can see, it's all blue. Up about 8k currently in Sac State. Pretty steadily been increasing that advantage throughout the course of the game. Individually, you actually see all five members of Sacramento State, including Garrett, richer than all five members of Montana State, so... Dominant play across the board from Sacramento State thus far in this one. Still quite a bit of League of Legends left to be played. Only 18 minutes and 50 seconds into this one. But the odds are getting ever more in favor of Sacramento State. Yes. 
Saris and Brace all wrapped up for XP. Uh, Arthur does have access to the Mura mana as soon as he picks up the Mana Mune. So I mean, big damage is going to be coming through. Uh-oh. Garen going to be forced to flash yeah. there. It's 3v4, but now Saxate's got the setup around the dragon. I was talking earlier about how advantageous this position is for Sacramento State as yeah. having the game. first setup. You, you can't do anything as Montana State here, and they know it. They're going to back off. Not going to look for any play. They're not going to walk through Caitlyn Traps, Jace Poke, Karma Poke, Rise Roots. It's just a nightmare. That yeah, could jump from any of these bushes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like the old Garen meme where Garen was in every single one of the bushes. Let's get the Zach this time. <laughs> I mean, if you're Montana here, is there is there a light, is there a way out of this? I think number one thing you want to do: try to get vision in your own red side jungle around the Baron, where you expect Sacramento State will be working towards next you can see the sac state line of vision all the way up in between the oh inner and outer turrets there and they're all pushed up that far too so maybe if you can get some vision control in that top side jungle and then get a pick around that vision while sacramento state's setting up for baron you could get an odd numbered fight and that could be your way back into the game ridiculous careful play Playing to the comp, being there early, getting the picks, doing what they absolutely have to do to get back in the game. Definitely. The, the pick part is important because one 5v5 or even worse, one fight where Sac State has a numbers advantage is probably just the game right then and there. There's so much time left before like Drake is up. XP has access to the Rise Ultimate if there's something happening around the mid lane, or TP if there's something happening on top side sex. They can just play around this barrier and clear all the vision um, and just make it incredibly painful for Montana to even look to be on that part of the map. And here you saw about 15 seconds ago, Montana State playing right into Sacramento State's hand. They had set up all of their vision around the bottom side jungle to enable XP and X to split push here, and then they can see Montana State on the rotation down to answer the split push and then go to Baron right away, which is exactly what they're doing. Montana State just going to have to try to burger flip this one. Maybe Chiguri can get some heroics going on. Baron is going to reset, so Sac State opting to take this one a little slow. Yeah, Chigiri used that Dragon's Ascent. I don't think that was intentional, because normally you like blast Cone over and the Dragon's Ascent out. If you're looking for the steal. Um, but Chigiri going to be rooted up. Garrett taking so much damage, though. Venti lets bouncing over the team. Love me walking into the crosshairs of a lot of Montana State members, though. Could be in a dangerous situation. TP's coming in. XP going to pick one up. Venti is a plot. Pile of goop. We'll see if the boys can support him. Love me getting some hits in over the top. Venti going to fall regardless. XP with a good realm warp going to get him and love me behind the back line there. Going to be able to pick off. FPS Fox. But this is three for three. Again, I said it earlier, this is fine for Montana State if you're trading evenly in these situations. This is hugely positive for Montana. You stop the Baron, you pick up an even numbered fight with that that ends up going even. This is this is great. This is exactly what you want to see. Let's see if they can hold this tower. It might be kind of tough. XP going to pick up another one. Looking really tough. I do have to respect that Ryze has the Rod of Ages done. Saris and Brace is all sacked up, completed. Caitlyn just really needs those two items and is absolutely melting any of these squishy targets. Yeah, Ryze is 5 0 and 2. It's kind of been the Love Me show for most of this game, but XP and X silently 5 0 and 2. Barely down CS behind Love Me. Gold between those two likely to be pretty close. Garrett almost getting the solo bolo onto FPS Fox, but going to be chased away when the cavalry returns to support him there. And that's sort of the one, one of the nice things about... Oh, wait a minute. Garrett played so far forward, but that empowered Karma W there going to keep him topped off. Chigiri oh. wants the play, and Garrett's just toy with these poor dudes now. Normally supports, and all you really hear about them is uh, ward battles, but <laughs> nice to kind of see the sports get a little bit of action in. Now, these two champs do damage. FPS Fox, despite not being nearly as far ahead as he was last game, opting for the Leandris build again this time around. 
So he, he's doing a lot of damage. Is the the Chemtech Putrefire um, with Grievous Wounds going back up to like the original values and just overall the stats that it gives? Um, it's actually not a bad pickup for those champions that like to shield the entire team um, or just offer a significant amount of heals like Soraka, Karma, uh, like Nami thinks it's okay too. So I do kind of want to shout out the, the Grievous Wounds pickup. Not that it's super useful. But oh my it's word. Oh my God. Arthur Dent just sent FPS Fox to the Shadow Realm. Eviscerated. Yeah, normally we see the control all deletes from Vagar, but uh, two item Jace on the support. I guess so. A little bit of control all delete. That's going to be Dragon number three over to Sac State Soul Point Ocean Soul Point for the boys. I would imagine, to be honest, the game doesn't end up going that long, but the option is there. Now, Sac State on the Baron, going to pick this one up. No contest, just too dangerous for Montana State to walk in there. I'll spend the gold. Death cap done for XP and X. He hurts a lot. Yeah, like he, <laughs> LDR in the most recent recall. Um, I feel like it was just a straight up LDR pickup. I would say likely. It's not the tankiest team in the world. You certainly like it for hitting Tom Kench, but... I don't know. I would have bought IE if I had IE dollars for sure. Oh, Garrett going to get... YOLO play on Chigiri. Eviscerated again, getting one back for FPS Fox earlier. And XP in this top side struggling not in the slightest against Dr. Goon, oh going to just God. take him down this rise. Three items and three seconds to take you down, I guess. Crazy. Yeah, besides those Merc Treads, um, pretty much like no it's just health. Um, XP has enough mana and AP on this rise to absolutely devastate any member of Montana. And now here's the push and pull. You've got XP drawing so much pressure up toward the top side, going to enable the mid lane inhibitor to fall for the rest of the, the team, taking that one down. XP takes down the top lane inhib, and I think there's a good chance Sacramento State's able to just walk this one in with the assistance from the Baron buff here. Shadowco dropped to a sliver, going to be forced to flash out of the Empowered Shock Blast there. Love me going to be rooted up, take a Boomerang Blade to the back of the head, but not a whole lot of damage coming through. Montana State going for broke. Sac State kiting back. XP and X going to go down. And this looks like it's actually Sacramento State on the run. But they're looking for the turn. A lot of damage is coming through for Sacramento State. Love me. Still on the back. Still healthy. Going to get rooted up by the Vagar Baby Cage. But he buffered the Caitlyn ulti. And going to pick up the rest of the kills. And march this one in for Sac State. And XP and uh, Arthur both just diving in there to kind of body block for Love Me. Um, I think that actually made the difference. And if they didn't, Love Me goes down. It's... Might not have been a game ender. And it was looking so dire, but Sacramento State with the decisive call on slivers of HP turned that one around and go for the throat right after and take the game. Sac State on the gas pedal game two. Never let off. Indeed, indeed. Well, that was a great one. Final game score going to be 2 0 Sac State. Going to add one win to the win column. Montana State not starting off with the. Opening to the season, they perhaps were hoping for, but played a good game here today and uh, hope for the best of them, best for them throughout the rest of the season. Thanks, everybody, for watching the cast today, and I'll see y'all next week on Saturday at 3 p.m. Pacific.